This week on Lucky Fish. Time is running out as we wait on weather to find a hurricane hole. Well, it's definitely time to move on. We see firsthand how dependent we've become on digital navigation and share with you the only surviving media from our voyage to Cuba. I took all my clothes off. <laughs> Following the Windows 10 meltdown. Okay, quick update. We just cleared customs and we're back on board the boat. We moved a couple of miles just south of Georgetown to a really comfortable anchorage we've grown to love called Ruins Bay. There is uh, thunderstorm activity outside, um, but we are protected pretty much fully 360. Great spot. Three weeks had gone by since we said farewell to Mick, our last guest of the season. And with him went the good weather and our chance to leave Georgetown and find somewhere safe for the hurricane season. Fortunately, there were some fine days and we put them to good use. Zaya's just hooked up the sewing machine to the 240 volt inverter for the first time. She's replacing the sun covers for the hatches. We lost this one when we were sailing with our first group of guests this season. My machine works. <laughs> we lost one in the wind. So it's no good for the hatch without, without cover. Yeah, look at that, you made it so quick. So that's that. I just need a string, uh, the stretchy cord. Do we have elastic? Yeah, I saw one up there. Well, that was so fast. You made that in record time. That was like an hour's work or something, yeah? Less than an hour, 30 minutes. Completely unrehearsed. Does it fit? Silly question. With you at the helm, we know it fits. Nice, that looks good. My job saw me up the mast trying to stop a rattle from the wind generator cable. And down in the bilge, changing filters on the water maker. Yeah, both filters look pretty uh, black. And it started to smell a bit too. It's taking a while to get the smell out of the water when you run the water maker. It's noticeable the flow rate's getting lower as well and I suspect it's because it's uh, blocked on the side. So let's put in some new filters. When we weren't working on the boat there was little to do but eat and wait on the weather to change. Not doing too bad on Lucky Fish. This is what happens when you're hungry and cook. Cook while you're hungry? Yeah. God, when I cook while I'm hungry I end up eating all the ingredients. <laughs> And that looks amazing. So what have we got here? Rice, this is rice paper, right? Rice paper wraps and seaweed wraps, tamaki. And some sushi. And these are steamed dumplings. Fried dumplings, actually. You see all those Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. What's the filling in the dumplings? Beef with some veggies. Mm -hmm, gorgeous. Uh, this is some salmon and tuna and stuff. Fabulous. Can't wait. Also waiting on the weather was Jean-Michel and his Tiki 36 Tagaki and new crew Michael. Yes, tonight will be perfect. They are making preparations to cross the Atlantic via Bermuda, but first they had to navigate the reefs out of the Bahamas. From there we go to... So, um... What happened? You sold your explorer charts. And, sold, I and, sold the explorer charts. And now you can't and get now, out of here without... No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> now you're stuck. Now I'm stuck. Not just stuck. Oh, it's the kettle. Stuck in more ways than one. I mean, we've got thunderstorms and some trough that's producing lots of rain. Yes. But also, we do need a chart in order to move around. It's useful. 
Jacqueline from Michelle and Takaki leaving to go to Bermuda. This is Takaki hand pulling their anchor. <laughs> well, we wish them well. Unknown to us at this time, this was to prove a fateful moment as poor Tagaki hit a reef and their plans were delayed. We really have come down to the wire now. It's uh, May the 15th and we're still here in the Bahamas and waiting for a weather opportunity to leave. We need to get the boat somewhere safe for the hurricane season. Uh, we've chosen Guatemala. It's about 900 miles away and uh, well it would be around about seven or eight days sailing if we did it solidly. But we aren't going to do this solidly because lying right in our path is Cuba. So we're going to stop in Cuba. Um, but at the moment the weather has really closed in today. Uh, we've had three weeks of what they call a lingering trough and it really has lingered. We've had a lot of rain. We had about a few days of bright spots when it moved off. It's now giving a bit of wind and rain to Florida and uh, in its place we've had this thunderstorm activity move in. Um, it really feels like the build up to the hurricane season. It is time to move on. Guatemala, in particular the Rio Dulce, is one of those places you hear about over and over again on the cruising circuit. Never a bad word, only positives, as the best and possibly only genuine hurricane hole in the Caribbean. But before we could go there, we needed charts. Right now, you know, we've been desperately trying to get digital charts to feed our chart plotter for the trip down the Yucatan Peninsula and it's taken a bit of uh, effort to get them but we have them now we had everything covered from here to Cuba, uh, Jamaica but now we're going west around Cuba so that puts us off the edge of the existing chart coverage that we have uh, and into the unknown so uh, it's been a bit of a victory today and I'm just about to find out whether these charts that we have downloaded against all odds in Georgetown actually work on our chart plotter. We've been trying to get charts for the east coast of the Yucatan Peninsula, Mexico, Belize, the Rio Dulce approaches to all those places, Cozumel, and it's taken two days pretty much full time as a sailor in the 21st century you are less of a sailor and more of a data manager we've become very reliant on digital charts it was the u.s coast guard in 2001 who recognized that you did not need to carry paper charts any longer on government u.s government vessels so clearly we have to have a few backups, and uh, we do, when they're mostly of the digital kind though. We're pretty dependent on renewable energy, uh, good electrical supply, chart plotters, and GPS. So we finally got a plan to get to uh, Cuba and beyond. We had some open CPN charts, CM93, and some US NOAA stuff, which is all free. But it didn't seem to me to have the same uh, detail that you need for approaches into ports and uh, shipping channels and so forth. So after two days of pretty intense frigging about on 4G mobile here, burning up the data, I've finally found some downloadable charts on a store that is online, will accept my credit card and will distribute charts to the country that I claim that we are in. Yeah, fill in the gaps. It does take um, quite a stroke of luck to get that trifecta to happen, but I believe we are right onto it now. In fact, I think we just got downloadable charts to the Yucatan Peninsula. Pretty happy about that. Well, it's definitely time to move on. If that's not a warning, I don't know what is. We've got a torrential downpour here right now. 
I'm just checking out whether these charts are going to connect. I'm just not seeing the detail that I expected, so I don't think we're loading the new chart. I'm not sure what the problem is. Be persevering. The leads, Guatemala, Mexico, all that uh, part of the world, that's what we're trying to get the detail on. The charts did finally load, and after four weeks of waiting, the weather cleared, the wind turned in our favour, and we set sail for the 400 mile leg to Havana. Our video recordings from here are totally lost, save for some clips and pics I'll use to illustrate the journey. First stop was the Humentos, a group of keys off the edge of the map for many, due to its isolation and shallow approaches. After stowing the dinghy, we left Flamingo Key, heading due west over a reef-strewn bank that would last for 150 miles. I set a waypoint marking our exit from the bank, and entry into the deeper water of the old Bahama Channel. We were both in great spirits and enjoying the warm sunny weather, What's the problem with these barracudas? Why do we keep catching them? I don't know. I'm catching too many of them and I'm hot <laughs> fighting with them. So I took all my clothes off. <laughs> Zaya was happy to be fishing again. First just barracudas, but then a nice cerro that ended up on the table. As we approached Havana on the third day, the rain returned, but the wind was still favourable. We were in high spirits as we sailed past the port of Havana, which is closed to cruisers, and continued a few extra miles to the Hemingway Marina, where we received a warm welcome from the uniformed officials. next week as we experience the vitality of Havana before pushing off for a challenging sail against the current to Guatemala. As always a huge thanks to our patrons for making these videos possible.